This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. Welcome in. Great to have you along. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain. It's Thursday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. It is. Luck of the Irish to you today. Now at 6.30, concern over how the new bluegrass stockyards could impact drinking water. That's prompted a public meeting that's scheduled for this morning. We're live taking a closer look at some sudden concerns. A lockdown can be a real bear, especially at the zoo. Polar bears on the loose led to people freezing in place in Cincinnati. And counting down to game time later today, we're in Des Moines where the Wildcats are getting ready for the first round in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, if you're heading out later on tonight, it's going to be pretty chilly watching the ball game as you're uh, taking off. But early this morning, it's the same situation. 30s, 40s, and 50s outside early this morning. And we track off into the rest of the afternoon. We'll actually be there in the 60s with a mixture of sun and clouds. I'm going to talk about these conditions and also your weekend forecast gets interesting. That's coming up. Mm -hmm. I know what interesting means. <laughs> <laughs> cool, I Just guess. Just a little bit of winter Disorder. left. Let's get to the news this morning. Today we are expecting to get a detailed plan as to how the owners of the Bluegrass Stockyards are planning to move forward. As you remember, the old stockyard in Lexington was destroyed in January by one of the largest fires in the city's history. Yeah, and this morning there are concerns that rebuilding on the Fayette Scott County line could pose a threat to the area's water supply. WKYT's Mark Barber is live in Georgetown to explain. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Michelle. And those concerns are expected to come out during the meeting that will start in just three hours here at the Georgetown Water Company. Now, look, in Fayette County, there's a lot of excitement about the plans to rebuild the $200 million operation on Ironworks Pike. However, here in Georgetown, there are a lot of concerns from people who think that the new location for the stockyards could pose a threat because it is actually going to be built over the aquifer that supplies the main source of drinking water for Georgetown. However, at this time, it is still unclear whether any construction at that site could contaminate the water supply. Those safety concerns will likely be the main point of discussion this morning during a public meeting at the Georgetown Water Company. The owners of the stockyards are meeting with an advisory group at 930 to walk them through their plans for the property on the Fayette Scott County line. A mix of people from Scott County and Fayette County sit on the advisory committee and they will likely make recommendations after taking a look at the proposal. Now the two groups are expected to work as quickly as possible to clear up any concerns about the water supply because construction crews are planning to start breaking ground this spring. Live in Georgetown, Mark Barber, WKYT. Thank you, Mark. Happening today, one of five people accused in a Lexington teen's murder will be in court. A preliminary hearing is scheduled for Marquez Smith. Police say he shot Caleb Hallett during a robbery in January. Hallett and a friend were in a car on University Avenue when they were both shot. Hallett died. His friend survived. The Kentucky House has voted along party lines to pass a state budget. All 53 House Democrats voted for the budget. They did not get a single vote from House Republicans. The budget restores many of the cuts proposed by Governor Matt Bevan, including the cuts he wants for higher education. And it uses surplus money from a state employee health insurance fund to cover some state pension debt. The budget now goes on to the Republican-controlled Senate. And despite the House passing that budget, Moorhead State University is still planning on higher education funding cuts that the governor has proposed. When the deal is finally done, they're concerned they will still be there. Last night, the university announced its furlough plan for staff and administrators. They will have to take five furlough days, one during each pay period between the end of April and the end of June. As for full-time faculty, they will receive a non-recurring salary reduction for the next school year that is equal to five contract days of pay. A McGoffin County man has pleaded guilty in connection to a vote-buying case. Scott McCarty admitted in federal court that he helped make sure a woman was paid for her vote in a May 2014 primary. He faces up to a year in prison when he's sentenced in May. Now, McCarty also faces charges in another case in which investigators say he and four others conspired to buy votes for two candidates in 2014. It's St. Patrick's Day, and you can enjoy traditional Irish breakfast and help out a Lexington firefighter at the same time. Yeah, do some good and, and enjoy a good time. Matt Logsdon is undergoing treatment for cancer, and today a group of firefighters is cooking up a huge meal to help him out. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is live at the break room in Lexington to explain what's coming up this morning. Hello, Caitlin. 
FIREFIGHTER MATT LOGSTON IS BATTLING STAGE 4 CANCER AND THE NICHOLASVILLE FIRE DEPARTMENT SAYS THIS BAND OF SUPPORT HAS GROWN TO BE SOMETHING THEY NEVER COULD HAVE IMAGINED. TODAY HUNDREDS ARE EXPECTED TO COME TO THE BREAK ROOM IN SUPPORT OF FIREFIGHTER MATT LOGSTON. NOW LATER THIS MORNING AN IRISH BREAKFAST WILL BE SERVED ON THE ST. PATRICK'S DAY. THEY'RE PREPARING FOR THE MASSES, COOKING UP TO 300 POUNDS OF SAUSAGE, upwards OF 1,500 EGGS AND 250 POUNDS OF POTATOES. IN ADDITION, THE DEPARTMENT WILL BE SELLING T shirts. It's a St. Patrick's Day tradition for them to do so, raising money for the local chapter. But this year, the shirts have a new cause. Brothers in Battle and Team Logston is printed on them. They already have 250 pre ordered. Normally, they sell 50. Now, donations and t shirt sales will be given right to Matt Logston. The breakfast starts at 9 and will continue all day today. Live in Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. All right, Caitlin, thank you very much. Well, two polar bears caused some tense moments at the Cincinnati Zoo up the road. The zoo says the two bears took advantage of an open den door. They'll do that. And they made it to a behind the scenes service hallway. Because of a double containment system that's in place, the zoo says the bears never actually made it out of the exhibit. But the staff reacted quickly and they asked all visitors to stay in place until they got those polar bears back where they belonged. I was obviously terrified. <laughs> I was shaking um, and having her with me, you know, my two year old. So, I mean, I love the zoo. I love everything that they do. I, you know, I'm a huge promoter of the zoo. But at the same time, it's kind of, you know, unsettling. The zoo says the bears will be back on exhibit by the end of the week after they, uh, I guess, think about what they've done a little bit. <laughs> Could you have stood there while you're watching a polar bear nearby? <laughs> you know, that's the thing. There's a polar bear on the loose. Stand still. Do not move. I don't know. I don't, know. I, I, I don't know. I guess, you know, that's what you had to do up there yesterday in Cincinnati. 6 37 right now. It's game day. The Kentucky Wildcats will play their first game in this year's NCAA tournament tonight. Yeah, and Coach Cal says the Cats know that Stony Brook. Is a good team and not one to be overlooked. WKYT's Rob Bromley joins us from Des Moines, Iowa, with more on tonight's game. Hello from Des Moines, Iowa, and Kentucky tips off the NCAA tournament tonight against Stony Brook in a late night game here at Wells Fargo Arena. And Stony Brook has never been in the NCAA tournament before. But the Seawolves have 6'8 senior Jameel Warney. He's averaging almost a double double. This is a team that lost in overtime at Vanderbilt right at the beginning of the season. You know, we may show clips in that score. Um, they played Notre Dame to a terrific game on the road. Um, matter of fact, they scored in the post whenever they wanted to. And Notre Dame beat them, you know, they, they overwhelmed them a little bit. He's good, you know, he's a great player, you know, they got a great team, great coach, you know. So we're going to do a great job of uh, playing them real good on defense and make sure you put a body on them at all times. All the action right here on WKYT. Late tip about 9.40 tonight. In fact, it's a big day of NCAA action across the country. In Des Moines and Wells Fargo Arena, Rob Bromley, WKYT. Yep, it's a big day of NCAA action. It we got is. our brackets. <laughs> yes, you do. You know, we're filling and, them out. Well, you're doing all kinds of research. I don't know. Well, all, you know, all I these take this seriously, Notes and whatnot. Bill. Yeah, I, obviously you, know. you do. <laughs> You've got to... Pick a 12 over a 5, a couple of those. Yeah, got so. to pick a couple of good upsets. Even the President of the United States getting uh, swept up in uh, March <laughs> Madness about now. Yeah, right? President Obama filled out his bracket for the NCAA tournament. He has Kentucky losing in the Sweet 16 to North mm. Carolina. Obama picked UNC, Michigan State, Kansas. And his big upset, Texas A&M, to be in the Final Four. Oh, Look there. He has Kansas winning it all. For more UK and NCAA tournament coverage, just go to WKYT.com. You can also check out the WKYT News app. All right, the president gets a big board there for his <laughs> Kentucky work, fans right? are not liking his bracket, No, by the way. you've got that. All right, 6.40 now, 20 before 7 on WKYT. Let's check to see how traffic is moving along this morning. Here's Officer Don with a check on live drive traffic bright and early. Good morning, Don. Good morning. Got a stalled car to uh, work around on Newtown Pike. It's just before Nandino blocking the right lane. They should clear it shortly. And the trouble we had at New Circle North Broadway has been cleared, so that intersection's wide open for us. It's going to look outside, show you a traffic flow at the moment. On the interstate, we're looking good as we zoom in there too toward downtown. 
No problems so far downtown. We'll see some later, of course. As far as drive times go, for now, from Nicholasville, it's about normal. No major delays there. Uh, coming in from Versailles, 11 minutes. Frankfurt's 27. Mount Sterling, about 29. Now back to you in the studio. Okay, thank you so much, and we hope you'll keep it here. We have more news coming up on WKYT, including our top stories. <laughs> from backyard to barnyard, <laughs> we'll show you how one neighborhood is dealing with one very pesky problem. <laughs> And we have the cooler temperatures the next couple of days, but we remain dry. Then we hit the weekend, and that's when the rain moves in, and not just rain, but maybe even a little snow. I'm going to show you if you can expect accumulation or not coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. I have a little cloud deck right over us, and that could give us. A little sprinkle action early this morning. I-64 northbound, that is your best bet. You can see it popping up here and there. None of that is going to cause any problems. It's not going to affect you. You don't need a raincoat or an umbrella. I'm just letting you know a couple of sprinkles could be falling out of the sky in that area. Work your way southbound. It's more about the temperatures than anything else. We're at 37 degrees now in Pulaski County. That goes into Summer, Somerset, Science Hill, the Faubish community. Go back toward Dunville and Liberty, maybe even Lincoln County, Waynesburg. Good morning to you guys early this morning. That area down south and southeast is the area they're going to be watching very closely for those temperatures continuing to drop. Taylor County, big game going on today. Uh, is uh, you head up toward the Boys Suite 16 later on this afternoon and here in Lexington. Speaking of that, if you're heading into Lexington, Try to make any plans on St. Patrick's Day. Don't forget to wear green, okay? Now, obviously, I can't do that. I got a green screen back behind me, but I got my socks going on, so we're good to go. I, you know, you got to be clever with this stuff. Weather people got to be clever. Mild day in store at 62. We stay dry all day long. That takes you into the evening hours. If you're heading out to a late dinner so you can be set up just in time for that game to come on uh, later on tonight, it's going to be a cool evening. It's not going to be patio weather. You'll have to sit inside, but uh, nonetheless, long sleeve shirt is probably your best bet. We head off towards your Saturday because Friday is still pretty dry. It's still a little bit cooler, but Saturday is when the rain moves on in. And that's when we're eyeing our next storm system. We'll have the wet, uh, wet conditions there Saturday and Sunday, but it's going to be a little bit of different type of wet. So it's chilly air uh, really there on Saturday. But Saturday night into Sunday, that's when the cold air moves on in. And that cold air could interact with that moisture and give us a snow chance. The breakdown on that, the chilly showers on Saturday, but it's late in the Saturday, early Sunday. We could get that snow chance in the forecast. And guys, really, it depends on where those temperatures are at that time. We could get some light snow out of that, so just keep that in mind. But the past few days have been fantastic. Happy little clouds this hump day. That was yesterday, obviously, in London. That's from Jump, my friend Johnny Nicholson. And also, look at all the trees blooming. They're starting to bloom. It says winter, stay away. That's James Starr. Let's check out your seven day forecast, guys. We appreciate those pictures on Twitter pics of the day. The next couple of days are dry, Saturday and Sunday. That is, those are your ugly days, but it's short lived <laughs> as we head toward next week. 60s, 70s, back in the forecast. Oh, but those ugly days are days <laughs> off for a lot of people. I know. I know for most people. That's uh, all it right. looks good, though, middle of next week. Yeah, so hopefully we'll have some basketball to watch this weekend. You got it. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Right. We'll, we'll get back to the good mm -hmm. weather, too. 646 right now. So usually it's a dog that barks too loud, right, when you're trying to sleep. But one woman is having a very unique pet problem with her neighbors. Right. Beverly Hall says that every day her yard is full of uninvited visitors. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> well, her oh, neighbors, farm animals, they wander over onto her property and tear things up. And now this includes goats, chickens, oh turkeys, even farm. ducks. Uh, they've destroyed the flowers and decorations in her yard, and now her neighbors say that they do feel bad about the animals tearing up Beverly's yard. And they plan to install a taller, longer fence around their property to try to keep the animals pinned in. But I mean, that's a, that's an onslaught every day. <laughs> You know, as an outsider, it's like, oh, that's a cute scene. They're not <laughs> right. too bad, but I guess they are eating. Right, but if you had to deal with it yeah, every day. That's yeah. True. All right, 647 is the time this morning as we roll toward 7 o'clock on your St. Patrick's Day morning. More news when we return. Coming up, we'll speak with senators from both parties about President Obama's Supreme Court nominee, Merrick Garland. Plus, the Humane Society's president joined SeaWorld CEO to announce changes to the park's killer whale program. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning next. 
Good morning. Thanks for tuning in to WKYT this morning. Your time now is 6.50. It's been a month and a half since the bluegrass stockyards in Lexington was destroyed in a devastating fire. It was a ferocious fire, certainly. And this morning, the owners of the stockyards are taking another step toward rebuilding their large operation. At 9.30, they will unveil a detailed plan for the new stockyards to an advisory group in Georgetown. They're expected to address some concerns and questions going on now that rebuilding the stockyards on Ironworks Pike could contaminate Georgetown's main drinking water supply. The large facility will be built on top of an aquifer off I-75 on the Fayette-Scott County line. The advisory group is expected to give recommendations after taking a look at the plans this morning. Today, the community has another chance to help out a Lexington firefighter who is battling cancer. The Nicholasville Fire Department is cooking up an Irish breakfast at the break room on Manchester Street this morning. All of the money raised will help support firefighter Matt Logsdon, who was recently diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. The firefighters say they've prepared to cook for 500 people. The traditional breakfast is being served up starting at 9 o'clock this morning. Should be a good food and certainly a great cause. Well, happening today, one of five people accused in a Lexington teenager's murder is going to be in court. A preliminary hearing is set for Marquess Smith. Police say he shot Caleb Hallett during a robbery in January. Hallett and a friend were in a car on University Avenue when they were both shot. Hallett died. His friend survived. President Obama's Supreme Court Justice nominee, Merrick Garland, is going to be going up to the Capitol Hill today and meet with some Democrats there. Some Republicans are not changing their no hearing, no vote, not even a meeting with him stance. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he won't be meeting with Garland, but he wished him well. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Charles Grassley says he is open to meeting with Garland in the coming weeks. A sheriff in North Carolina has suspended five deputies for their actions at a Donald Trump rally. The deputies were escorting a man out of the rally in Fayetteville when video shows a 78-year-old walking up to him and punching him in the face. So millions of people around the country will be tuned in today for the first round of the NCAA tournament. Right, including one game they're really going to be watching tonight. Many are still trying to figure out how in the world to fill out their brackets. For the CBS crew, they've been working on this tournament for weeks. Al Janu Vale is going to take us now behind the scenes. Games don't start until Thursday, but there are still plenty of fans out to watch UNC practice. But even earlier than that, 65 members of CBS crew have been making sure not a moment of the madness is missed. And while most fans at home only get to see what the cameras are pointing at or how good their seats are in the actual arena, just a few feet outside, there's one man who's looking at every single camera angle there is and choosing what you get to see at home. Try not to think about how many people watch or else I'd get nervous. I'd never be able to make a decision. Mike Arnold is the director for CBS March Madness. He's also directed big games like the Super Bowl. And if you think it's stressful watching your favorite team on TV, Arnold says it's a new kind of stress, making sure you see them. Everybody's yelling and screaming and, and you get to filter out what you don't need to know and what you do need to know. Arnold tells me it's an organized chaos, though, and one they've been preparing for days. He says CBS has brought out extra cameras and trucks to handle the big event, and they're as prepared as they're ever going to be to make sure you can root for your team this week. I'm A.J. Janivel. All right, and don't forget about our Hoops Hysteria Bracket Challenge. It's your chance to win some awesome prizes like a 65-inch LED smart TV or up to a million dollars. And it's simple to play. Just sign up at WKYT.com. Police in Euclid, Ohio, think they finally cracked the case of a home being egged more than 100 times in a year. Police say it was one of the neighbors, 30-year-old Jason Kozan, is charged with vandalizing the home. Detectives say they identified Kozan following undercover stakeouts, neighborhood canvassing, and testing of eggshells at a crime lab. Well, that would be an ongoing problem, certainly. Looks like they may be to the bottom of that. Coming up on 655, and right now on WKYT.com, those questions and concerns being raised about the proposed new bluegrass stockyard will be addressed at a meeting this morning. Some are worried about the new facility being built close to the main water supply for Georgetown. We'll certainly be following up that today on our newscasts and online. It is game day, and you can keep up with the Wildcats in Des Moines as they open up their run in the NCAA 
tournament tonight. Rob Bromley and our sports team are covering the fans and Coach Cal's team ahead of the tip-off. It's a late one tonight at 9.40 right here on WKYT. As we mentioned, time is running out to fill out your NCAA brackets. Get in on our Hoops Hysteria Bracket Challenge. Be eligible for some good prizes and win some bragging rights as well. Prove Dave Baker wrong. <laughs> We're also uh, covering the boys' Sweet 16. Uh, they've already had some great games, including the nightcap last night. It was a lot of fun. The Dunbar versus Mercer County matchup. Dunbar eventually got the win. It was a tough game. More games today at Rupp Arena, and we will be covering the action for you. Over on Kentucky.com, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell telling President Obama's pick for the U.S. Supreme Court nomination that he will not even be considered. McConnell and some other Republicans want the justice to be named by the next president next year. And CBS This Morning is coming up very shortly at 7 with your eye opener. There they are getting ready to go at the CBS Broadcast Center. They'll be also also talking about a big announcement about the future of SeaWorld's killer whale program. And of course, we'll have local updates as well. So join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and for the latest news anytime, WKYT.com. Yeah, the 30s, 40s, and 50s outside earlier this morning. The coldest spot is really southbound in the southern zones. We go through your St. Patrick's Day forecast. We get toward noontime if you're heading out to lunch. Mid to upper 50s, still sunny, still breezy out today, but a little bit cooler later on this afternoon in the 60s. And then later on tonight, if you're heading out, grab a light coat before you take off. All right, nobody's more up to date than you to start your day. Thank you for being with us on St. Patrick's Day. Have a great day.